from Digital Offensive and you're watching CTF Minute. CTF Minute is where I go through tools and techniques to help you not only in CTF challenges, but also in real life pen testing. Today's topic, we're going to go through basic binary analysis to grab a flag. I was at a recent Capture the Flag event uh, about a month ago. And I've been kind of holding off on this um, video just because it's very basic um, techniques to really grab these flags in these low level uh, challenges. So this uh, event I attended had about 30 something challenges around binary uh, analysis, grabbing a flag from a basic binary. And the first level of all 30 challenges, so like it was different groups uh, so like a Windows group, a Linux, an ARM, a mobile, and so on and so forth. Different architectures, but each of the first challenges was very basic. And that very basic uh, challenge allowed you to grab quickly at 30 plus points on the system that ranged anywhere from 2 to 3 points all the way up to like 10 points depending on the architecture. But they all have the same common flaw. Now you're going to look at me and be like, hey Mike, this is really common. We already know how to do this. I know. Uh, the only reason I decided to go ahead and do this video is I was looking at Twitter and uh, Rob Fuller and Ubix had a post out there that said it would be really nice if someone had uh, a zero to hero type book around CTFs uh, and challenges like that. How to go, uh, how to do CTFs from different aspects, uh, not only from binary, but like web, forensics and things like that and really building up on the technology and going from there. Uh, everyone needs to start from somewhere and there's probably people out there that hasn't seen how to do this or has never really tried this themselves. So with no further ado, let me get right into this. So on the my machine right now, I have a whole bunch of the uh, f files from the capture flag. I'm not going to mention the event or anything like that. Um, so you can't just go out there and use the same techniques right away uh, for that challenge in particular. You could use the methodologies on other challenges to be able to quickly uh, solve them. So in this case, we have a file on our system here. And this file is basically a standard ELF file. So basically a standard executable file on Linux systems. And in most of these challenges, these low level challenges, the first thing you want to do in any of the binary analysis, is start looking at this file, what's in that file. And some of the tools you could do this is strings. So we can run strings on this file and you can see a whole bunch of data come back and a lot of the data is readable. Now right off the bat you can see by running strings you can see the flag right there. Now the other cool thing in here is you can kind of make out a little bit of what the program's doing as well. And you can see that it's accepting a password on the command line so, as an as a argument so basically you can run this uh, application, pass it a, uh, a command, and if that command is correct, or that password is correct, then basically it would echo back that flag file. So you would have to figure out what that password is to be able to do that if you actually wanted to solve it by just running the uh, command and entering the password. But through binary analysis, we're able to quickly use strings to see this. Some of, so some of the other tools people like to use is XXD. And it's similar to strings except that it dumps out in a hex format. It's a little harder to read. Um, this is kind of the format you would find in a basic debugger uh, if you look at the bottom left hand window. But down here you can see your flag as well if you scroll through this. Now scrolling through a file like this could be very troublesome. So the easiest way to do something like this is most of these competitions will tell you the format of the flag. So let's go back up to our strings command, right? So if we run strings and we pipe to grep, if we know that the syntax of the flag is flag and then a variable. So if we run that, right away we get our flag to come right back to us. Similar to XXD, except with XXD, what you're going to run into there is it's going to break it apart uh, across multiple lines for you. Uh, it's not as pretty or easy to use. So strings is definitely one way to go about this. Now since this is a very simplistic way and people are like, oh, what a waste. Let me show you one other way that we can do this too using Gira. So let me jump over to my system here that's running um, Gira and we can go through how to use this tool. Now some people call it Gira, Gira, Gira. Um, I heard it referred to multiple ways. So whatever you refer to it as, 
this is the tool that was released recently by the NSA. Uh, it does, goes through a great ability to decompile applications for review as well as learning about uh, debugging. So we have it running here. So basically we have gear to running here. And basically what I did here is I launched the application. I selected to import my file and then I ran a full analysis of the file. And actually what we'll do here is let's just start fresh. Let's actually close out it and reopen it. Let's say hit don't save. Um, so basically when you first launch uh, Jira, you're going to get a screen that looks like this and you're going to create a new project. And when you create a new project, it's going to give you this file system here. Uh, from there, you click on the little dragon and the little dragon is going to pop up and you can see where it says no program, right? So if it says no program here, we're going to go file, import file, and we're going to find our application that we want to analyze. Here I call the application CTF bin. It was much easier than type in 16D5, so on and so forth. So just call it uh, CTF bin. Okay, so basically it comes up and says an analyze. CTF uh, bin has not been analyzed. Would you like to analyze it now? So let's hit yes, right? And I'm going to hit select all. And it's going to go through a multitude of checks, trying to decompile the code, analyzing the code, and basically breaking it out for us. So we're going to hit select all here. We're going to hit analyze. And this is going to go through the process right now. Now, for those who have done assembly before, you know where I'm where I'm going to go next with this. Once it's all done decompiling, is I want to go to the data section of the application. And the reason I want to go to the data section of the application is because that's where initialized variables are usually stored. Now, the flag has to be already initialized because it's not something we're providing to it. It's something that's already in the application. So nine out of ten times, if they're writing proper uh, proper code, that data should get put into the data section of the application. Um, so what we're going to do, is we're going to come over to the RO data section of the application of the code that we basically just decompiled. And we're going to look in that data section. And when we do that, right off the bat, we can find the flag. So basically the flag has been initialized within the data section. So guys, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Uh, I know it's very short, kind of basic for the most part. That's why I kind of threw this little section in here, just to give you a little more information about how to use other tools to go through these challenges. Now remember, this is just the basic binary challenges that you can use this on. The more advanced challenges you go, you're gonna have to start looking at the assembly more, uh, other tools to decompile the application, um, and basically walk through tools like, like maybe GNU, Debugger, uh, e, uh, uh, EDB, or using Jira to go through the application and figure out where the flags are within the applications. But this is a very simplistic basic challenge. Um, as I said, I was able to quickly rack up 30 plus points within maybe less than 30 minutes of my time. The fa uh, the longest thing it took me to do was to download that file and then run the strings command and then basically enter my flag into the system to get the points. So if you're looking to score points really quick or you need a few extra points at the end of the competition, definitely check out some of the binary challenges, the basic ones, to see if you can rack up some of those points. Uh, hopefully this was useful to you guys. If you like these videos, make sure you subscribe. Click on that bell up top there to be notified. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Have a good day.